radiates out and that more peaceful uh, accepting loving kind of energy affects the environment it affects what how you treat people you know and then that affects how they treat people right so you know, yeah, do I want everybody to meditate? You bet I want mm-hmm. everybody, everybody to meditate. So that is uh, one of the skills, teaching skills that you have, one yes, of them. that's one of them. And you are going to be sharing that with us here at the, at Devolution. Yep, this and is And I'm Saturday. so excited about that. Uh, yeah, so, me too. So tell us about what, tell us about Ak- the Akashic Records, how... What led you to that? How did you get into that type of meditation, and what does it accomplish? Okay. The Akashic Record refers to other lives. And at one time, and we always called them past lives. Of course, now we're learning that time is kind of a, it's kind of a made-up concept in a way. <laughs> and so we don't know, we don't really know, are we having them all at once? Are they really <laughs> in a linear order? You know, I don't know. Um, but it's about other lives that we have experienced. And culturally, that was a big no-no subject for a long time. And it was thought like it was really crazy. But a lot of the right. research with the, with the different Bibles of different religions, it shows up in every one of them, including huh. uh, uh, the Christian Bible. Huh. And it's a, very, it's a very old belief system. The majority of people actually do believe there is reincarnation, but it's still not accepted by the major, you know, some of the major church systems. But right. some of them there are. I, you know, it's just it's kind of sitting out there, and it's it, it's been growing in people's consciousness. And boy, it's like I've been interested in it. I start I started by going to a workshop with one of the few people that actually trained years ago I mean it was at least it was at least 35 years ago and I didn't at that time immediately start teaching but in that workshop I got in touch with a couple of my you know life experiences and I realized how much peace it brought me so I I, you know I started to realize it is a healing tool even though people, I think, now are just so curious right. that they want to come and satisfy some of their curiosity, right. which is okay. But actually, they're, if they keep working with it, they'll find that different aspects of their lives will change. And some of it might be not a huge, giant thing, and some are just very huge in terms of relationships and patterns mm. that they've you know, kept doing that they don't want it to do anymore. They mm-hmm. find out it's been a long-term pattern. Uh, so the Akashic Record is actually the list of your lives. And you don't get it, like, in a list. You know, it doesn't come to you in this big Darn. list. But I thought uh, maybe I was just going to get yeah, one mailed. Get, kind yeah. of get a, a, a little piece of paper that says <laughs> here they are. Yes. <laughs> but you can retrieve them. You can retrieve through a, through a process of what's called regressive meditation. And, again, not everyone is fully able the first time to get, get it all connected. And some people, boop, they, you know, they're just there and they're able to recover some of that huh, material. That's so fascinating. But, but learning the process, you know, they can, they can continue to use that process and until they're... Uh, brain and mind develop the skill to retrieve some of those memories. And some of the memories may very well be uh, DNA memory uh, from our, our experiences or even people in our families. Mm-hmm. You know, there, it's, it, it gets complicated in some ways, but it's, it's fascinating. But for me, it's been a healing tool. And that's how, that's the way that you are going to teach us, yes. right? And that, see, to me, sometimes I don't really want to know things because things don't matter that happened before. Uh-huh. What right. moving sometimes forward is what matters. But if you give me a tool to understand, uh-huh. then I'm in. Yeah. Well, 
Well, this is just one example. I used to have a really intense fear of heights. And that's a bad one. It's a bad one. It, it, you know, but, you know, you can walk around it sort of, but, but, but I didn't yeah. have fear of getting up. So I would get up in these places and could not come down. I mean, see, that's all, that's to, crippling the fire almost, come right? Get me. See, I had, you know, my <laughs> dad. One time, I stayed up on top of a swing set for half a day until my dad got home oh to get me down God. because oh I got up God. there no problem and could not get down. And I just had a bunch of those experiences. And well, I, I did get in touch with a life experience where I was a male person. And I was on this huge cathedral roof. And I wasn't at all afraid of being up there. And so, and I, apparently I wasn't at all afraid of getting up there. But I slipped and I fell. And that was really scary. I mean, I could feel how scary that yes. was going down. And, but after that, my fear of heights has, like, dropped by... 75 percent because now you understand where that yeah. fear came from well and i understand that okay n- now i get it why i would get up things again right. and again and again and why i couldn't get down <laughs> isn't that funny <laughs> yeah but uh you know i can get down you know i can get down now and if it like looks too big i'll say to myself you know what do not go up there right because you're you not know, gonna be able to get down right, you're, you're, you're gonna get stuck <laughs> and, and and it's funny if you sit down and really think of how because that was a silly fear. Yeah. It was a silly right. fear. And if you really sit down and think about how really everybody has one of those, I think. Oh. Mine is, I'm fine going up inside of stuff, like buildings and stuff. No fear whatsoever. But if you give me a ladder and, and lean it up against whatever you're leaning it up, I can only go so far. And it's totally irrational. I cannot go any higher on that ladder. It doesn't matter if there's two people <laughs> holding it. Yeah. It doesn't matter if I'm carrying something or not carrying something. I cannot go any higher on that ladder. Mm-hmm. So that's I'm going to be that's interested what, to see why. Right. What what comes up? Yes. Right. Because that's totally irrational. Totally. It, <laughs> I mean, it is. It is. But then when you so, find so. out how you started started with it, you realize it's not that irrational. Uh-huh. That you know from experience that certain things are dangerous. Yes. And you've experienced the outcome of it. Yes. Even though it wasn't in this lifetime. A lot of people have fear of water where they've oh, had water. Right. My cousin. One of my cousins. Yeah. Huh. Really that one's a really... A really common one. Um, or who was I just talking to the other day that is deathly afraid of, it's either cats or dogs. Oh. I think it might be cats. Uh-huh. Could that probably, probably another life experience mm-hmm. unless they've been attacked by and, cats. And she, not that she ever remembered. I'm pretty sure it was cats. Yes. And things, some things like I can understand that you're afraid of just the way that, like snakes. I don't like snakes. That's understandable. You know, I, to me, that's of, not kind irrational. Kind yeah. of like spiders. Spiders, but, you know, right. But you now you like spiders. You might love snakes. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> I can't. <laughs> that might make me hate chocolate, and I don't yeah. want to hate it. <laughs> I don't want I to know. be a hater. I know. Well, clearly, I did love chocolate more than that. I hated is so spiders, funny, but... though. So you were meant to like spiders, <laughs> but now you're just not afraid of them. I'm not afraid. of That's them. a funny way to overcome it, though, isn't uh-huh. it? It, it backfired was. It was on like, you. Be careful what you weird. wish for. <laughs> That's so funny. So they leave, uh, they leave me alone because I think I don't emanate any kind of fear energy. Oh, right. So they don't even bother me. That's good. It's very strange. But anyway, a good lesson. It was a really good yes. lesson. Yeah. yeah. You'll have to tell Stacy, or she'll have to listen to the show later <laughs> to hear that story because it's really funny. So why do you think, and I ask, I ask a lot of people this question, why do you think that there are some people that seek things to learn things, to know things, and there are some people that are totally complacent living in this little spot. Well, I, you know, honestly, I think some of it is that there's some people 
who come in with more information than others, that they've had ah. experience in other lifetimes. And so they naturally, there's like a resonance, you know, that there's something that feels familiar. Um. You know, like meditation to me seemed like a natural thing to go toward. Uh-huh. And so I probably did do meditative work. Who knows? Maybe I, I lived some lifetimes in India, you know, and, and, and so it was a, a familiar thing. And I knew at some level it was good. So I think that's one reason uh, that some folks just, you know, it's like some of the kids that come in that are these major artists and amazing uh, musicians, they come in with some information because right. they didn't have time to learn all that. It's it's in there. And then, and then I think the, the other reason is fear, that exploring for some people is just too darn scary that they've gotten their little box all kind of set up and they feel relatively secure and the world scares them so they're not big adventurers uh, and, and you know in some people's personalities they are big adventurers they want to do new things they want to get out there and they'll try all kinds of goofball things <laughs> uh, <laughs> you know and take big risks but the folks that are more timid or maybe have had bad experiences in other lifetimes, too. Oh, right. Because right. We, we bring those memories also. And so if, if you had bad experiences, you're not wanting to go get burned again. Mm -hmm. So you become more conservative in, in, what, in what you do. I never thought of that. That's, I like that. That makes sense. And then the another reason is for some people, it crosses religious boundaries that they're afraid to cross, and so they don't. Even if even if inside, they do think it's possible or that it does exist, they don't want to cross those boundaries and get into trouble. Mm -hmm. Because some people are taught that and mm -hmm. they have been for centuries right so it's not actually ir irrational it's really what people have been taught right don't go there you know don't right. go to meditation that's against our religion <laughs> right. Right. right 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 yep and i i have actually heard people say that that they won't do things because of that <clears throat> yeah so they exactly. let they let other things limit them but you know what it's fine every it takes all kinds of people to make well, up our does. world and Right. And as the culture moves toward the acceptance of certain ideas, they'll get more comfortable. Right. I mean, when I started just teaching breathing, people were freaking out because they just thought <laughs> I it know was how to too, breathe. It's, too, it's against my religion. I can't too, take exactly. They just thought it was too weird <laughs> and, they, and that they were afraid it was going to trigger satanic stuff. I mean, breathing. Wow. That's how intense it was. And look at now. It's it, pretty commonplace. Well, it's really common. Reiki is really common. Right. Touch for health is really common. You know, all kinds of ideas. But oh boy, when we started, not so. And that wasn't that long ago. I mean, less than one lifetime. Right. It changed dramatically. Right. In that so regard. that's encouraging. It is encouraging. I mean, that's really fast. If you look at how evolution usually works, it takes decades for certain ideas to, well, I mean, centuries for certain ideas to get, you know, to change. Like, you know, the world being flat versus round. It right. For, you know, well, and there the, still are some people that well, think there are. it's. The flat Earth Society still <laughs> Right. That's so hard to believe, isn't <laughs> I know, it? I it's so amazing. Hello. So actually, you know, things are moving really fast. Mm -hmm. But we feel like it's not because we just want it to happen. Right. right? Just like right. be here. You know, one of the things that I really like um, is collective healing and collective um, meditation. And I know one of the... Something that warmed my heart and my soul was when people in Flint did that healing water oh, meditation. No. Wasn't that amazing? Yes. Very, that was so powerful. Very, and, very good. Very sweet. And very how many wonderful. people were there? A lot. Tell us about that group that you just went to. Oh, yeah. Well, I've been working on... De uh, learning another meditation process through the Self-Realization Fellowship. 
and they they focus on 